Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> Excuse me, Mr. George, I want to start with you, ask you a question that is frankly off topic, but I never want to miss this opportunity. And I was given the perfect setup by my predecessor questions. I'm going to give you a fact pattern and then ask you to answer a question. Um, last year was the best construction year for home building we've had in this country in a decade, and yet it was still only at the level of 1994. Indeed, the home building industry is a third smaller than it was in 2005, but our number of households is growing even faster than it was in that year. Uh, the estimates that I've seen, and I'm sure you've seen, are that we're building millions fewer units than we need, and we all know what that results in. Uh, young people living together, doubling up, tripling up, or living in mom and dad's basement. Trust me, I know this story well. Home prices are soaring, rents are soaring, and those are the lucky ones that get to do that. Because the truth is, when you have this picture, you inarguably, inevitably create more homeless people. It is a natural law and consequence. So, um, without respect to the bills before us, you're in the business, why aren't we building more homes? Whew. Okay. Um. <laughs> Well, let's just start about that. Um, on a, I'm not a home builder. I, I certainly do represent a whole bunch of them. Uh, but uh, I can tell you that a number of things are happening. First of all, I think that a lot of people blame it on the federal government. I actually think there's a lot of state statute that puts a lot of additional expense into home building today. Uh, it, uh, it's hard to break ground on a piece of property and make uh, a decent return on that given the oversight and regulatory burden that happens locally. The second thing is, is that I would say to you that it's hard to find skilled uh, labor. Uh, we aren't doing a very good job in this country in training people how to be electricians, plumbers, framers, roofers, et cetera. I know that personally, uh, particularly right now, there's a glut of that uh, labor in the state of California. Uh, last but not least, um, I think it's uh, incumbent upon us as a lending industry to become a little more innovative in the way we look at uh, loans. Uh, let me give you a quick example. Generally speaking, the number one impediment for somebody buying a, a first-time home is their down payment. It, particularly today, it's hard to raise money uh, with student debt that they have as an overhang from going to school, or even for that matter, when you see rental uh, being 40, 50, 60 percent of somebody's income, you're almost always going to not be able to save a couple of bucks at the end of the day to be able to put a down payment. There is innovation in the marketplace recently introduced that is talking about having <clears throat> a broader way that people can gift money to people, not borrow money, but gift money. So um, it forms itself in a crowdfunding environment so that uh, millennials today are thinking more of different ways to be able to come up with their down payment. Um, Fannie and Freddie are both looking at the way loans can operate. Two identical borrowers, one with no down payment, but two years worth of reserves, one with a minimal down payment, and uh, two months worth of reserves. Both of the agencies are seeing that having a deeper level of reserves um, protects them against a default than what we saw previously. I also think that we're doing a far better job servicing loans previously, uh, prior to the housing crisis. A loan could go 30, 60, 90, or 120 days delinquent well before anyone reached out to the borrower to talk to them about solutions. That whole process is wildly different. You get a single point of contact. We're reaching out to you aggressively, trying to figure out what's going on. And in many cases, we're modifying your loan so that you don't go that far behind. Answering your question as it relates to builders, I do think that uh, there's a number of things in, impeding this, and so the move-up customer moving from their starter home today isn't moving up, and I think that's um, leaving inventory really strangled, particularly in parts of California and all throughout the United States. Mr. George, for somebody that answered a question that wasn't on your agenda today, I thought you did an outstanding job <laughs> and that you were comprehensive, and I express my appreciation to you. Uh, I, with my last name, George, it's almost incumbent upon me to be curious, so thanks for the remark. <laughs> I want to conclude with two observations that I've come to in my year's work on this. Uh, the, <clears throat> the first of which is th this is a bigger crisis in this country than we're acknowledging, i.e. not building homes at sufficient pace to keep up with demand. And the second is it's an ecosystem and everything we do in on one part affects another. You made reference to the GSEs. 
there's kind of underlying consensus in this environment that GSC reform will allow for more upfront risk capital. Inevitably, that will ratchet up the number of basis points of a cost of a mortgage. Inevitably, that will make more homes out of reach for people. And so my final point would be whatever we do in the way of GSC reform and housing reform, we have to remember it's an ecosystem. Every piece affects the rest of it. Thank you very much for your excellent answer. Gentlemen's time has expired. With that, we recognize.